free fall onto an unforgiving mountain. Absorb your surroundings and square up your target. The stage is set for Dome Wars, an artillery game for Macintosh, which emerged in 1996. Welcome to Yesteryear's Mac Games, the niche series for niche games on what is arguably the nichest retro system out there. The spotlight today, however, falls on a game for which concept is pretty widespread. As stated earlier, Dome Wars is an artillery game, and it's simple to grasp how to play. Pick your turret angle and shot power, and blast a shell across the play area. The concept has been around since computing's infancy, and has been predicted to have originated on mainframes as far back as the late 60s. Programmers have made versions for home computers, with a version for Apple II let loose in 1980, and another one a year later for the Commodore PET. Games consoles weren't far behind, with smithereens hitting the scene in 1982 with sound, colour, and synthesised speech, direct to TV sets. Artillery Duel was the first game like this that could be considered a hit. The 1983 game saw release across the Atari 2600, ColecoVision, Commodore 64, and Vic 20. An oddball release from Microsoft no less came in the form of Gorilla.bat. Bundled with MS-DOS 5 around about 1991, Gorilla was aimed at those learning how to program with BASIC, and was modded extensively by many a budding programmer. It was around this time that a number of mechanics that make Dome Wars what it is started to emerge. DOS gamers got Tank Wars in 1990, which introduced different types of weapon to select and use. But it was Scorched Earth, released a year later, and its Amiga clone Scorched Tanks that cemented the concept of numerous armoured objects upon a jagged mountain, blasting each other to bits. These are the two games that most people remember. All of these artillery games, though, are dwarfed in terms of success by one particular Cash Cow series from Team 17, which began in 1994. Worms games have hit every single platform imaginable, including the Mac. I'll get you. Back to the subject at hand. Dome Wars on the Mac was maintained by its developer, Nathan Sturtevant as NS Software, for a decent amount of time. Version 1.0 could be played on 68k Max, while the more technically advanced 1.7 plays on OS X, from Jaguar to Snow Leopard. There have also been plans to port it to iOS. Nathan maintained a development blog about that for a bit, but it's been silent for a number of years. Will it ever be finished? Well, here's hoping. I've captured footage on a few different versions, so the eagle-eyed of you will notice a few differences in interface and graphics. I personally prefer the earlier versions. While technically inferior graphically and mechanically, I'm just not on board with the visual style of the newer ones. Dome sprites seem a bit too big, and not as neat as the earlier ones. This is hardly game ruining, of course. Visuals are pretty simplistic. The background and mountain are two contrasting patterns, and the explosions are big red circles. There's not a lot going on in the audio department either. There's a few music tracks which are playing in the background, but the sound is mostly pow, bang, boom, and... Additionally, if you enable it, the AI domes will sass you when you kill them. I wanted to quit anyway. The game places up to nine human or computer-controlled domes onto the playing field, whereby you take it in turns to molecularize one another. Control the angle of the cannon with the left and right arrow keys, the power with up and down, cycle the weapons you have available with tab, and fire with space. Completely missing your target couldn't be any easier. AI capabilities range from the blitheringly incapable to impossibly unfair. The idiot and straight shot domes will blow themselves up more than other players, and in my opinion it never stops being funny. Revenge and Lobber AIs are capable of targeting other domes, and get closer with each shot, while Cyborgs are always on target, with their shots only occasionally hindered by the terrain. If you're playing against a Cyborg, or a really skilled friend, it's best to dispatch them first. You can buy better shells to make this easier, and there's a huge choice. Shells range from a standard explosion of varying sizes, 
two multi-war headshots, guidance weapons, shells of dirt to entomb opponents, and even shells that will roll up the mountain. There are also defensive options available to purchase. Batteries will rejuvenate health, shields will lessen the impact of hits, and the very helpful anti-gravity item will allow you to float in mid-air, should the terrain below you be destroyed. If that wasn't enough, you can specify your own custom weapon too. The biggest explosions in my opinion tend to be a little cost inefficient, and are only useful if you have the first shot and a whole line of domes packed together in your sights. Using the weapon designer, my way around the cost of bigger explosions like this has been to make use of the funky weapon option. Upon landing, the shell goes down the discotheque and lets a number of small multicoloured explosions off around it, so make sure this option is checked and up the number of warheads and be ready to paint the sky blue. This could take some time. The painted sky is completely optional. I myself have always liked having the shot tracing on, but it does get a bit messy later on into the round. There are plenty of other ways to customise gameplay. Set the starting cash to a nice high number, so that the idiot AIs can have fun wasting expensive shells in suicidal shots. Set the behaviour of the walls and ceiling, toggle the wind speed, and alter the parameters for which the terrain generates. You can play on what are essentially zigzags, or alternatively, something flatter than the Netherlands. Pulling off a good shot isn't straightforward, it really is trial and error. You could watch the power levels of the AIs as they take their shots, to get an idea of what figures equate to what distance. After a while, the numbers will start to make sense and getting a shot on target the first time, without needing any adjustments, will start happening more often. Dome Wars is at its best when you're playing with friends. Hot seating is the classic way of doing this, but some versions also support networking. It's not hard to break a smile when your meat space opponent has meticulously designed and perfected their new weapon, and is itching to test it, only for one of the idiot AIs to fluke a direct hit with a baby missile knocking them out of the round before they could so much as get close to the keyboard. Feature-rich and fun, Dome Wars is a pretty solid artillery type game, and it's a fair degree more accessible today than the stuff I usually cover, due to the native OSX version. It generally behaves itself under emulation, but no promises there. You can find a handful of different versions to download and play in the video description, with downloads existing on the author's website, and of course, Macintosh Garden. For best results, play it with a friend, or eight. Maybe not eight, it would take too long. But the competitive nature of Dome Wars, and its easy to pick up, difficult to master nature, makes this a fine choice for those looking for multiplayer fun. If you enjoyed this retro review, or are looking for more on games that the classic Mac OS has to offer, why not explore some of my other videos? You can, of course, also subscribe to keep on top of new videos, added periodically. So as ever, thanks ever so much for watching.